Hey, hey, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at five key concepts, scarcity, choice, opportunity cost, utility, and the basic economic problem, which create this general understanding that you need to have for the foundations of IB economics. And this is really the first video you should watch in the series that take you through the fundamental things that you have to have in your mind and have an understanding of in order to begin the process of moving through the IB economics curriculum. So big picture stuff. What is economics? And the way I like to teach my students is that I like to start really big and, and, and talk about why is it important? What is economics? After all, if we're going to study it, we need to have a firm understanding of what it is. Economics is a social science, which is to say it's the study of how people interact with each other, right? So people think we're not robots, so our individual behavior is not always predictable. But large, the interesting thing about economics is large group behavior is actually quite predictable and therefore, quote, studyable. And this is what, econom this is what economists do. This is what you're going to learn to do as you move through your course. You're going to learn to study human behavior and the coolest thing about economics is there's always going to be the opportunity to say, yeah, but I don't think I'd do that, which is cool, which makes, I, which makes economics even more interesting. But the curious thing about economics is that on, on average, human beings tend to act the same way. And so we can predict human interactions. And through those predictions, even if they're a little bit flawed and we're going to build in a bunch of assumptions, the cool thing is you can actually predict human behavior and then of all things, put it on a graph. And then tell all these stories about what happens within these graphs. Um, so economics is about human behavior. And it's what makes it super interesting. Um, because in, and it's inherently flawed. You're going to be able to discuss this on and on and on with many, many people as you go, out through, go throughout your life. And you're always going to be right. <laughs> you may be always be a little bit wrong. But economics is the basis of all politics, too, if you think about it that way. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at. So here's the logic in terms of the details, right? And I want you to think about this if you go through the course. Like, there's a logic to things. Things aren't just the way they are because they are. There's usually a logic behind things, right? So the earth has limited resources. And these resources are used to produce goods and services. And therefore, and people also have infinite wants and needs. And there is the conflict. So there's this conflict in economics between the finite resources of the earth and the infinite or never-ending needs and wants of people. People can't have everything they want, so resources must be rationed. And this is a really important word. Ration means to, sh to, to decide who gets what in some certain way. And this is where economics comes in. So economics really is the study of how scarce resources provided to us by the earth or maybe human created are allocated or rationed, given out to fulfill infinite wants of consumers, the wants and needs of consumers. So that's economics in the big picture. Like, what are we doing here? Well, there's limited stuff on the earth, and we live on it, and we have, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, or certainly we do have infinite needs and wants. So how are we going to take this finite resources we have and decide who gets it? How are we going to ration it out? And that's the, the basis of the study of economics. So here's some core economic terms you got to know just to sort of talk the language. And I always say this, like the discourse, ah, it's like kind of like economics is kind of like learning a new language. You got to know these words. If you don't know these words, you can't really speak, you know, talk the talk. So there's a whole host of them and you'll be studying them and studying them. But the, these um, five are really important to know right away. OK, goods. Goods are physical objects that can that are capable of being touched. They're tangible, such as vegetables, meat, motor cars, anything you can pick up, a piece of paper, a pen, an iPad, whatever. Those are goods. Services are intangible things that cannot be touched, such as motorcycle repairs, haircuts, insurance, health care, education. How do you pick up an education and carry it around with you? Well, you don't, but you pay for it, right, either through taxes or through a private school. So services are intangible things uh, that cannot be touched. Wants, things that we would like to have, but we're not necessarily, but they're not necessarily for immediate physical survival, such as iPhones and televisions. As opposed to needs, these are things that we must have in order to survive, such as food, shelter, and clothing. And then resources, 
those are the resources are the goods used to produce other goods. And we're going to talk a lot about that. Like, how, what do you mean goods? What resources? Well, if you want to have some cereal, you need some wheat. If you want wheat cereal, you got to grow the wheat first. That's the resource. And what do you turn it into? Cereal. So that's the good is the cereal, but the resource to make it uh, might be the wheat. It's also the labor that goes into it. Maybe the building that you used and the stove and the oven and everything you use to actually make the cereal. So those are core economic terms you need to know. Okay, now we're going to go through some core um, economic concepts. Scarcity, choice, opportunity, cost, and utility. Scarcity. And if you need to stop this video and take a look at these notes, uh, these notes in this first fund at Foundations um, of economic series, you're going to be able, you can stop and take a lot of notes. Uh, but the idea is that you can, I'm going to go through quickly so the video doesn't go on and on. But scarcity is quite simple, right? Scarcity in an economic sense means that there's not enough of something to satisfy everybody who wants it. And therefore, we must pay a price for it. Okay, any item that costs something in an economic sense is considered scarce. So once you pay a price for it, the item becomes another economic term, an economic good, which is defined as any good or service that has a price and is thus being rationed. Think about price as the decisioning factor, the decision that decides who gets what. I mean, everybody might want to buy a car, right? But not everybody can. If the car's 10 bucks, well, then everybody who has $10 can buy the car. But if the car's $10,000, well, then you have to have $10,000 in order to buy it. Okay. So the price is rationing it out and there's fewer people that have $10,000 than have $10 and therefore there'll be fewer people who can buy that car and therefore if you do have it, then you get it, okay? So if, if it were not scarce, if things aren't scarce, it would be a free good, be free or a free good and you can have as much as you want for it without paying for it. Take a, to think of air as an example of something that's a free good. Choice. Choice is another core economic uh, concept and you got to understand that people make choices, right? It's the key to understanding and studying economics. Do you want a piece of pizza or a burger, right? Since people do not have, people do not have infinite incomes, they make choices whether to purchase goods and services. They have to decide how to allocate their limited financial resources, the money in your pocket, the money you got when you go to school in the, in the day. Maybe you got five bucks in your pocket and you go to lunch and you're like, ah, what am I going to buy? Well, you only have $5, so that's what is going to make you have the choice of what to buy. Okay? And this leads to one of the core, another core concepts in economics, right? which is opportunity cost. And this might sound quite complicated, opportunity cost. What does that mean? The cost of the opportunity? Kind of. Yeah, opportunity cost is simply what you give up in order to have something else. So, for example, and I live in Santiago, Chile, so if you buy an empanada instead of a chicken wrap at the cafeteria or on the, at the, on the street, the opportunity cost of the empanada is the chicken wrap, right? So you can't have the chicken wrap because you bought the empanada. And the, so, therefore, the opportunity cost of buying the empanada is the chicken wrap. If you... Um, uh, so some other ideas. If a good or service has an opportunity cost, then it must be relatively scarce, right? So we'll have a price and be classified as an economic good. Great. Free goods do not have an opportunity cost. They're not scarce, so they have no price. So they're free, like air. In other words, an air is I can consume all the air I want. It's not taking any of the air away from anybody that's around me. Okay, but opportunity cost is always expressed in something else. It's never expressed in terms of the money that you spent. If you buy an empanada, you can't buy a chicken wrap. If you buy a new bike, you can't buy um, a new cell phone, right? So, so the opportunity cost is the thing you have to give up in order to buy something else. Which gets us to our last key economic term, which is utility. Utility is simply a measure of usefulness and pleasure a consumer receives when they consume a product. This is what makes you happy. The utility you have when you buy something new, it's, like, it's why you skip around and are happy when you buy something. Right? It brings you pleasure and it's useful. But there, there actually are two different kinds of utility. One is total utility, which is the total satisfaction gained for consuming a certain quantity of a good. And then there's something else that's getting a little bit more complicated maybe than we have to in this introductory series. But marginal utility is the extra utility gained for consuming one more unit of the product. So it's believed that in the majority of cases, the marginal utility gained from extra units of a product falls, goes down, 
as consumption increases. And think about the how happy and the, the, the utility you have. Yeah, you have an ice cream cone, you're hot, and you get the ice cream cone, and you eat the first ice cream cone, and you're still hungry, so you go get the second one. Well, the second one doesn't really make you as happy as that first one. There's a diminishing marginal utility. If you were to get a third, you might not be that satisfying. Someone, then if you got a fourth, you might actually get sick. Right? So same thing if you sit down and have a piece of pizza. The first one's delicious. The second one's good. The third one's good. And by the fifth, you're like, well, what am I doing? Right? Well, that's margin utility. Total utility would be the total happiness from all five pieces of pizza or all four pieces of uh, four ice cream cones. And then lastly, every society must make certain decisions. And there are three main questions that they take a look at that end up making what's called the basic economic problem. And so, what needs to be decided in every society is what are you going to produce, how are you going to produce it, and for whom are you going to produce it? Right? So these three questions are the underlying main questions or economic problems for every society and therefore every company. If you're going to make, if you want to, if you want to have a product on the market, what are you going to make? Right? What should be produced and in what quantities? So using the scarce resources we've already talked about, if you're in a society, how many computers should be produced? How many bicycles? How much wheat? How much milk? Right? And this has to be decided for all economic goods. The other thing you got to produce is like, how are you going to do it, right? There are many different ways of producing things and are different combinations of resources that may have to be used in production, right? Should sports shoes be produced by an automated production line or should we hire some workers to come into the shop and sew them up together, right? Should, should crops be grown with a high use of fertilizer or should they be done organically? And lastly, and these aren't necessarily in any particular order, I don't think, is like, for whom, Right? Who are you going to produce these things for? Should, should they go to those who can afford them? To be, or should they, be fit, should they be shared in some fair manner? Right? How are we going to decide what, for whom we're going to produce something? Okay, so how and who makes these decisions, therefore, is key to economic study. And that's building into something that we'll get into in, a, in, a, in another video in this series, is there are two theoretical economic systems. One is the free market, which, by the way, is where price decides who gets what. You can buy it, you can have it. And that price also indicates or dictates or sends a signal to producers to produce more. If people are buying it, um, they're going to produce more of it. And then there's something called a planned economy, which is an economy where the government decides everything. So for now, free market price decides everything, production and uh, consumption. Planned economy, the government decides production and consumption. Okay, so there you have it. The first uh, video in the foundations of IB economics series that I'm putting together. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you soon.